My name is Kristen Schall, and I'm here to tell you about a movie that I came up with called Avant Garde. And you're welcome. When I was 19, I came up with one of the most artistic, deep, and poignant ideas that I've ever thought of in my whole artistic career. When I was in college, I took a screenwriting class for the first time. I was a performance studies major, which basically meant like you could like tape a fruit roll up to a mini fridge and put it in a park. <laughs> you could do a lot of stuff with performance. I had this idea on the first day of class and it was about a character who wakes up and has this urge, this drive, they don't know what it is, to build these wings. The first part of the movie is black and white. It's like, you know, a Caravaggio, you know, chiaroscuro, like bright light coming through a small window, illuminating a dark little studio in a garage, and they're just consumed with this idea to make wings, because fate is telling them, make your wings, tell your story even if it's gonna kill you. It's so tragic. And so she builds these wings, or he. It's an androgynous figure. Cut back to a movie theater audience, and they're watching it on screen. Cut back to the character, and they, he's found these different materials, he, she, and they're just like steampunky pieces of metal and like a grinder or something, you know, like a couple watches or whatever, you know, like a leather straps. They've never wanted to make wings before. That's not, they're not wing makers. They're kind of made out of a bunch of junk. She builds these wings and takes them to a cliff and takes a deep breath because they're going to jump. They're gonna fly for the first time. At the time, I was listening to Tori Amos <laughs> nonstop, and I still am. So it could be a Tori Amos influenced like piano, uh, bass, you know, but, but then there's more flourishes, more orchestra, you know, uh, probably some Danny Oingo Boingo. What's his name? Danny Oingo Boingo? Danny Elfman. Yeah, I would have Danny Elfman score the film. And then they look out into the horizon. Are they seeing this? It's a tear. It's a tear in the horizon. And there's a tear in the screen, like an actual physical tear. What is that? Cut back to the character about ready to jump, and they jump off the cliff, and they're flying, and they're going, and they're going, and they fly through the tear in the screen into the movie theater audience in color. Ah! It's not 3D, it's, it's real life. I imagine the audience sitting there when this, is, this event is happening, if they even have a second to turn to their friend, which I don't know how, but they might be like, whoa, and they're like, whoa. This is groundbreaking, I love it. Best $10 I've ever spent. And then he slowly disintegrates because he's a fictional character who cannot exist in the real world. He's slowly disintegrating because he's a fictional character who cannot exist in the real world. Aren't they a she? They're androgynous. Wings fall to the floor. They're still there for some reason. Those go in the museum, obviously. The critics are saying, I'm quitting being a critic because I don't know what's up or down anymore. I'm quitting being a human because I don't know what being a human is anymore. I hope this lives forever. I'd like to take my grandchildren to it because they can see the moment where culture changed. Kristen Schaal should win an Oscar for this. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I know this show is like, oh, you made it and it's so dumb. Like, of course it didn't get made. You're so naive. Secretly? Bye.